I'm glad that you're able to join me this afternoon. Our learning objectives today, well, there's a lot of material to cover, even though it is an introduction. As you probably know, there is so much more to data management than uh, other disciplines can agree that they know about. But our learning objectives today, we're going to identify our roles and responsibilities of our team and pay some attention to protocol design and development. One of the important things is that, and sometimes it's forgotten, that data management has to read and understand the protocol in order to be able to design case report form and, and build our database. And we're going to also list some of the startup activities and the documentation that goes along with that and discuss case report form design and our data tracking and collection, data entry and capture. Also discuss data review and validation and why we write queries and how the best way to identify those. Recognize the rationale of our MEDRA dictionary for coding of adverse events. Discuss database lock and, and release to biostats and look at adverse event reporting and reconciliation. And then some possible suggestions for future study or some additional knowledge, especially when it comes to, let's say, using eSource. So I'm going to ask for you to respond to these. Are you a member of a sponsor CRO or an independent consultant? And if you are a sponsor, you can give me a green check CRO. Yep, okay. And I'm going to make the terrible assumption, and you know, we try not to assume anything, but are you of the data management discipline or other discipline? Okay, data management, and that's what I thought when I got the information ahead of time. How long have you been with your company and or in data management? Okay, so you just started. This is all new to you then? Okay. All right. Well, hopefully this will bring things together as far as process and information for you. We always start with good clinical practice, and I'm sure that the company that you're working for probably has a GCP session once a year where you would sign off. We know, and this is just for some information for you, is that the ICH E6 has had an amendment that has become published, let's say, in November. But what is good clinical practice? And there are rules for conducting our, our good, clean, and ethical research. And it started out with the Declaration of Helsinki, which was written and adopted in response to some crimes that were committed during World War II. The purpose of GCP and this purpose of good clinical practice, the purpose of FDA, the purpose of IRB, is really to protect the rights, the safety, and the welfare of the research subject and patients. We also want to comply with global requirements. And some of the bolded items I have here on these slides are those that are peculiar or particular to clinical data management, and that is to ensure the integrity of the clinical data. So the principles of ICHGCP is that studies should be conducted in accordance with ethical principles. Risk versus benefits should be weighed. We know that for different types of studies, let's say for cancer chemotherapy, sometimes the risk may be greater than, let's say, the benefit or may be equal. The rights, the safety, and well-being of the trial subjects or patients has to be considered. And the trial should be scientifically sound and described in a detailed protocol. And I've been in data management environment now for many, many years. And Unfortunately, I've had the opportunity to see some protocols that were, have not been written very scientifically. They've been loosely constructed, and as a result, once the protocols were submitted to FDA for review, and the maxim is if you don't hear from the FDA, you know, 30 days, no news is good news, and then you can start the study. And I worked for Large Pharma, which followed that rule, and when the FDA came back, you know, 60 or 90 days after the protocol had been submitted with significant changes that required protocol amendments in case report form changes, it was because the, the protocol was not written for scientific integrity. We also want to ensure that the informed consent is obtained from every participant, and appropriately so, and the confidentiality of participants is protected. So the roles and responsibilities for the International Conference on Harmonization, or ICH, was the remit for that, that group was for a global harmonization of the application process and the labeling of investigational or medicinal products. Back in the day before the ICH became known as it was, Basically, when we made submission, I worked for Zeneca Pharma for 15 years, and we would make submission to, let's say, Ireland in the United Kingdom, 
and if Ireland gave an approval, then other members of the United Kingdom would also accept the compound. And we would probably submit to Ireland because it was less expensive, let's say, to make that submission. But for every country that you would make submission for, it would be different formats, different templates, different requirements for content. And so now the ICH is really given us some standardization and the types of things that should be included in our study design and our reports. The FDA and other regulatory officials, their role and responsibility is to protect the health and safety of consumers. They enforce the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act and regulations and laws, and they regulate the processes through which the evidence of product safety and efficacy are developed.